Welcome to the World Mixed Doubles Curling Championship 2014. Coming to you live from Dumfries in Scotland and from the Dumfries Ice Bowl in the middle of town. I'm Richard Harding and I have with me today Sarah Carlson. We are going to be featuring the Czech Republic against Slovakia in our feature game this afternoon. Draw seven in Group C in the mixed doubles. Czech Republic on one and zero, Slovakia with one loss so far from their first game. And the standings in Group C see Japan at the top on two and zero, Czech Republic and Switzerland one and zero, Australia and Poland one and one. And further down the table, Netherlands and Slovakia zero and one, and Romania on zero and two at this stage. So the Czech Republic team is made up of Susanna Haikova and Tomasz Paul. Team coach is Dan Raphael. And for Slovakia, we have Veronika Kvardova and Ladislav Dershi. Team coach for them is Jana Kvardova. And briefly, the rules of play. Two players, one male, one female, six stones in each, uh, for each team. One of them pre-placed on the ice. 46 minutes of playing time, they get eight ends. And each player plays either stone one and five or stones two, three and four. And the players can switch positions from one end to the next. Both players can sweep and no takeouts are allowed until the fourth stone of each end has been played. So inside the ice bowl, I am Richard Harding and Sarah Carlson is once more joining me this afternoon for this game on sheet D. Yes, great to be back for some more curling. Czech Republic put their last own draw in the forefoot. Slovakia just biting the 12 foot, meaning uh, uh, they will start the first end. That is Czech Republic with hammer. <coughs> and uh, Veronika Kvardova is ready on the hack. You see the pre-positioned stones there, the team with hammer, that is Czech Republic. They have the red one just uh, behind the button. And uh, Slovakia has the yellow center guard. So the first um, stone in each end is always the freeze. I don't think I've ever seen anyone uh, try anything different with the first, have you? No, I, I'm, they've obviously worked out that that's not, that, that, that this is the best option. But we have seen variations on this, just uh, freezing right onto the stone or tapping it back slightly. Uh, and that can be uh, worthwhile doing. Of course, you can also come up short. I mean, the aim there was obviously to freeze, but just a little bit short. But yeah, in I the don't front of mind the it short when it's also quite open for line. Yeah, had that been kind of half buried, it would have been a trickier one. But I like it short Everybody. rather than tapping, because then you get a lot of separation for the team with a with their last own advantage. So Susanna Haikova cannot play the freeze herself coming around the other side. I'd like her to keep maybe top eight foot not all the way down to the shot stone because it'll certainly shrink their scoring area down. This is a really nice position. Also leaves quite a tight gap for Slovakia to come around and make make the freeze. There's not a lot of room for error on this one now with the redstone just played by Susanna. So the second, third and fourth stones here will be played by Ladislav Dershi. For Slovakia. Yes, he has a tricky first shot, and the, the room for error is definitely on the short side, freezing the top red rather than bouncing off the back one. 
Uh, this, however, will be a bit too short, still leaving two red counters. That's the male player for Czech Republic. Of course, they got the bronze in 2014. Quite a solid mixed doubles team. And he's going to come down with yet another one. And he'll do pretty much what Ladislav tried to do with his previous. And there's now really clogged up with red in the forefoot. Well, it's interesting to note uh, the team lineups here where the men in both teams are going to play second, third and fourth stones and the two women playing the first and the fifth stones. It is the most common way, but we are not sure that that's what they're going to stick to, though. The players are allowed to switch positions in between every end if they like. Ah, and he plays quite a nice one, but jams the red one and rolls out, leaving uh, Czech Republic just the same opportunity again. Or maybe, yeah, he's going to play the same shot once more. Electing to leave the top yellow that could maybe be run down or tapped back by the Slovakians. So, Tomáš Paul. Plays at the rink in Prague, four sheets of curling yeah, yeah. ice in the yeah, yeah, yeah. city yeah, yeah. there. Spirit, yeah, yeah. Spirit. One of the new rinks that have sprung up for curling around Eastern Europe since uh, around 2000, last 10, 12, 14 years. Actually, one of the best ones as well. It's a really nice facility. Slovakia has a couple of options here. They could try and make a double, limit the scoring for Czech Republic, or they could try and tap the yellow back to maybe sit frozen on the shot stone. Both are tricky shots. Remember, there's not a lot of time to get out of, out of trouble in mixed doubles. They're only playing five stones rather than eight. Vladislav only cleaned this up a bit for Veronika's last. Ah, oh, and he will chip off his own. Still leaving red three red counters in play. However, in their uh, qualification to be here, okay. uh, they played in uh, Bratislava uh, against uh, a total of... Uh, there were 10 teams in the Slovakian uh, qualifications. And um, they lost the four in the first day, end of the final, so they're used to fighting back. Won it in the extra end. Well, I'm sure they'll be much happier not losing a four in the first end of this game, but uh, okay. it's looking favourable for Czech Republic at the moment. They are the red stones, just to be clear where we are here. And the yellows belong to Slovakia. And it's the last shot for Tomáš Paul. So they have two more stones to play here. They're already lying three. So really good shot here would be perhaps just to tap that front one up a little bit more but curl sufficiently to be on the inside of it as it you see it from the skips point of view preventing any kind of yeah, useful yeah, raise on the takeouts yeah. by uh, Slovakia so 
So if he can just a little roll inside here, it'll be a nice shot for him. Bet. That's a controlled draw weight. Tap back weight. Well, perhaps a little bit light, but I don't think too much harm done with that. No, it's still Slovakia that needs to really think and figure out what they're going to do with their last. So this, this is, is a tricky tap, but it'd be really good if they made it. It's really a get out of out of jail card for them. So this is the last stone in the first end for Slovakia. Just uh are they just looking to come through that gap? And they're, they're tapping the uh, yellow stone on the 12 foot that's yeah. just behind, beside the center line, trying to tap it yeah, behind the two reds and sit frozen on the mm. short stone. So direction all important here. <laughs> Waiting for it to curl. It Calling curl. it back line, which should be quite good weight. Here it comes now. Oh, trying for option B, perhaps. <laughs> well, manages to cut check down to sitting only two, I believe. Well, sometimes minimizing the damage is, uh, and and lying fairly well there um, is. Another option. The problem here is that they've left the raised takeout, and that would give Czech Republic a three. Could even give them a four if they manage to roll in. I don't think they can get the raised takeout very easily and the roll. I think that's the complication with that. Well, if they just they're quite close together, it'd be interesting to see what she can do. So, Susanna Haikova. And it's this the curl, though. It does. Oh, well, she won't get the double, but they will pick up two. It's a good start for the Czech Republic, even though they were looking to score a lot more for a while. So at the end of the first end, Czech Republic take two points to lead two to zero over Slovakia. One of the things to look out for, I think, was uh, Susanna's first in the first end. Because they were, after a while, they were lined up to set a bundle. And because they choose not to come down and freeze all the way onto their shot stone, but they left it top eight foot, it allowed them room to get more stones in and also put a lot of pressure on Slovakia to make a really difficult freeze and force the error and then allowed themselves a lot of stones hanging around the forefoot. So Susanna, I come up, starting the second end for the Czech Republic, and this time, of course, Slovakia have the advantage of the last stone. Let's see if they can use it. And a little bit short and moving the guard across. These two stones placed before the end start. It's not a... It's 
not really an acceptable result to wreck on the first uh, because now you leave the team with Hammer a chance to come around and sit two behind guards and they've not really wrecked enough either to leave much of a gap for them to come through. If uh, Veronica can draw around here, it's going to start to look really good for them. Had to go out wider though, probably wider than they've been in practice as well, so it'll be slower out there and won't make it into the rings. So, our Czech Republic going to draw in another one now. On the wide side. Well, it looks like they're going to try and come round the right hand of these two red stones belonging to them. So what good is that going to do them since they're not going to be able to get to the shot stone probably anymore? Well, it's certainly early in the end. Tomasz Powell sweeping this one. It could be short as well. It is. <laughs> I think it's just the teams getting caught in the fact that at practice everyone's just looking for that perfect uh, tee weight and uh, they're not really using the spots on the ice that are wider so it'll be slower. Now I think uh, Slovakia is going to try and come through the gap. It's also a new spot in the ice, they need to make sure, or, well, they don't know when it's going to break, coming from the centre line and out. I think this one's going to be on the guard as well. I'm making it really difficult to get to the rings. So the really, really long tap back on the red being called. Just get one in maybe in the forefoot area would uh, certainly close uh, the scoring opportunity for Slovakia, making it hard for them to put up, put to pick up more than one. Need to make sure that they hit this in a good spot, though. They don't want to hit it thin and roll out, because then the draw path will be whoa, wide whoa. open again. So Tomasz, Paul. This is the second, second of his... Uh, no, this is the third of his three stone. And he, that's, that's a really nice shot. It's really h difficult to tap stones that long, especially when you're running up to sweep it yourself. So you can see the people behind on the bench, they are doing statistics for each of these games to measure the accuracy level of all the players. Looking to just draw behind here once more and out count that red stone in the front of the house belonging to the Czech Republic to leave Slovakia lying two. Probably need quite a lot more weight all the way out here. And it's really curling too. Can he get it past the red ones? No, and the center line gap is closed up even more. Not a big 
Peťka to bola, dobrá rýchlosť. Peťka nás spadla, no. Well, the problem a bit is when they're asked to draw down the line f much farther out, as you already mentioned, uh, Sarah. They're used to playing the draws on the faster ice down the middle, and they've played more stones down there, so the pebble's a bit more worn, it's a little bit faster. Then they play on the less played ice, and it's a little bit slower, and they're just finding it tough to adjust to that extra weight that's required. So Tomáš Paul has one more stone here for Czech Republic and then Susanna Haikova has a shot as well for the Czechs. They lead 2-0 to zero at this stage. Yeah, certainly if they can just close everything down and give up the one they'd have Hammer back and just like in regular curling, being one up with Hammer is a great situation. So, nice steady delivery from Tomasz Paul. And really, they're just trying to block things up and give Slovakia the single point and regain the last stone advantage. But there is a chance to tap this yellow one into the middle to outcount the Czech stone. Not actually that hard a shot for Slovakia to pop another one in here. No, it's just a matter of where to put the broom and what way to throw. Well, which is the question and with every shot, but mm. all the way out there in the tap, how much is, is it going to curl? It's, it's not very easy to know. His previous draw around here curled a little bit too much. Definitely also needs a little bit more weight than he has played. Needs to get another three or four meters of running on this to get it right into the center of the house. What's he got? And Slovakia just looking to see if there's a way of getting a third one. Actually, I would have thought the draw coming down as we look at that picture, the draw coming down over the Hardy Engineering logo and drawing into the house to lie just perhaps touching the green four-foot circle would give them their three but they're electing for a raise instead on the other side. The draw is perhaps the easier shot, having just played down that side twice. Yeah, it also looks like they have a bit more <coughs> space to... It actually looks really difficult to get a third one in there, however you play it. So Veronika Kavardova just trying to draw this third shot in. Tap the yellow one up. Well, she's not got enough weight. No, she's got, well, she had some good line, but just short of weight. But it's going to be a score of two back and a tight game after two. Uh, France, they are leading uh, the game against Ireland, 3-0. So is uh, China against New Zealand, 3-0 there as well. 
USA is uh, has a 1-0 lead over Norway and uh, Netherlands is one nothing up on Switzerland. Those are the other games going on in the ice ball today. And I bet you Thomas Paul is quick with correcting the umpires there. He does not want to give up extra points. <laughs> <laughs> well, <laughs> normally this job's an umpire job, but uh, we see the players do it from time to time when uh, the umpires are putting the scores up. It just makes it run a little bit faster. Yep. And that's curling for you as well. It's um, you know they the players just trust trust each other, and that's fine. So 2-2 two -two the score after the second end. And the third end will begin with Veronika Kvardova. She has uh, an accuracy in this event so far of, which to be fair is only one game, of 32%. So my goodness, she'll be looking to improve upon that. Uh, the percentages are normally lower in mixed doubles, of course, because, well, you don't have your sweepers. Uh, and we see a lot of finesse shots that's being played as well. But around 70s or 80s, I think the really good players are. Susanna Haikova has a tournament accuracy of 84, which I would say is uh, really great. But then again, they did medal last year, so quite the experienced Czech team. Fails to come up with uh, this one though, and um, starting to look like the previous end where there were just a, a lot of guards. Both teams struggling a bit with the weight here. And uh, Veronica Kovardova taking the house indicating the ice for Ladislav Dershi to come through the little gap there between these two stones and lie first shot. He has played 57% and saying that one sport's only one game and they lost it so well he's through the gap is he going to stop them? Well, he hits him. it's a nice roll taps the Red check counter to the back. Good shot there from Dershi. Yeah, he's, he's on form today. There is a gap still, though, for uh, Czech Republic to follow down. And Tomas Paul scoring 92% in this event so far. Well, lots of Really good scoring. Oh, just catching that guard, rolling it across, and his shooter goes out to play. So this is a. Uh very open end of mixed doubles compared to what we're used to seeing. Actually, more of two corner guards, which should be beneficial for Czech Republic, who have last stone, but it is Slovakia with the shot. So three stones remaining for both teams. And after this one, only two for Slovakia. Okay. 
They have done a good job of that. As uh, Tomas Paul awesome. playing the double peel. Assum means uh, eight, so that would be eight seconds. We have on previous occasions believed that he was calling out his own stones to be awesome. And that one kind of was. Made a double. And has opened things up. So Thomas Powell, the best player on the ice at this stage of the four players here. With 92% in the championship <laughs> in the previous game. And actually replacing this guard, perfect. It's not the easiest thing in the world. You think it's just a guard, but playing a perfect guard on ice that curls this much, and also down the track where you haven't been playing, it's not the easiest thing. I think we would see a lot of the teams um, also getting rid of the back red or drawing another one behind the, the red guard just um, to make sure they don't lose two. They have uh, come down to their own. And if uh, Tomas Paul makes a double here, we, Slovakia will be looking at two red ones. Awesome pool there. Yeah. Okay. So, peel weight being called again. What's impressive with Thomas is he, quite often he gets up to sweep these uh, peels as well, which is not easy. And has he got it? He will. And, uh, they will sit too. So, quite unusual for mixed doubles. This end is pretty open. It's often a lot of stones in play concentrated towards the centre of the house, but here it's pretty wide open. Yeah, it moment, looks a lot more like a regular game of curling. <laughs> At the moment, Czech Republic lying two, and Veronica is hoping to hit and maybe get a little roll behind that one guard. Try and put some pressure onto her opposition. So one more stone to come after this from Susanna Haikova. Nothing on the sweeping here as she got contact. Tap this through and roll out, roll it. She does. To the is, other she, side. is she making the double? No. No. Ah, oh, just a little bit more curl and she would have gotten both. Now it's going to be a free draw for Czech Republic and Susanna Haikova. So last stone here at the third end, eight ends of play in mixed doubles. And Susanna, Susanna Haikova has pretty much got free draw to the house for two, but she's fast onto the sweeping. Just 
just need to find the paint with this. This was always the risk when Slovakia chose to guard or draw rather than removing the back red. So it will be two more stones to the Czech Republic. And after the third end, they will be leading four shots to two over Slovakia. So both teams trading deuces so far. Ireland uh, got three back on France, so, so they're now on three each. China picked up a steal of two against New Zealand. It's now 5 nothing over there. And uh, Norway came back. They lost one against USA in the first end, but then they took three and stole one. So they are up 4-1. And it's uh, one each between Netherlands and Switzerland. So the last stone goes back to the Slovakians. And that, of course, means that Susanna Haikova plays the first stone here in the fourth end. Well, a little bit further up this time. Last couple of times she's been short. Still a little bit shorter than she would have wanted, but at least it's in the house. Yeah, if it's that short, you, it'd be really good if it was just a couple of centimetres out to the right, because then it's a lot easier to tap it up. And uh, Slovakia going to come round and try and sit top eight forefoot, just as um, Czech Republic did in the first end. And this one uh, just a bit shy on weight as well. So the order so far in this game being maintained by both teams. The two gentlemen players playing second, third and fourth stones. The two ladies play the first and last stone. I'm impressed with Thomas Powell's delivery. Very solid. And then he seems to be able to get up quickly and run after it and not have any effect for on the delivery itself, which is good. Yeah, quite often we see players a bit stressed with their delivery just from being in a hurry to get up and sweep. And um, is it uphill coming this way, Richard, do you think? It looks a little bit as if it's uphill going both ways because they've been short, a lot of short stones and almost every end. Well, I was saying about Thomas running after it and not having too much effect, but... That's a common effect. You actually throw it a little bit light when your uh, concern is to get after it, try and sweep it. So are we going to see yet another nice tap from Ladislav? The Czech team the younger of the two. Ladislav Dershi, he has been curling for 
12 years, Veronica much newer. Just three years since she started playing. As he got this, ah, he will wreck on the guard and didn't look too happy, but maybe someone should sweep that yellow one into the rings. <laughs> uh -huh. Well, he got the roll into the front of the house. Slovakia lying one right from the outset of the end here. In behind all the guard stones. I think again, Czech Republic just uh, feeling content with giving up uh, just the one, so they're just going to try and make it difficult for Slovakia to score more. Tomasz Paul again. Going for the hit and roll here. Well, he makes it quite nicely. And I think ideally he would have liked that to have stayed behind the front stone of his own to be better protected. Make it tough for the Slovaks to score two points. Well, looks like they could play the same tap again. I'm not sure that's the, that's what they're intending to play here, though. No, I, th I believe they've uh, changed the call and they're now going to hit and roll off the red, which would still leave them sitting one, but it would also it would be in a quite in a nice position. Oh, she called it right out of his hand. And, uh, maybe change and play the tap now instead. To try and hold the line on this one while she's on to the front one, but... <laughs> ah, she, he has done a great job anyway. Oh my goodness, that was a shot. And because that stone was uh, just resting next to the red one, the, when the connection came, it had the consequence of pushing the yellow straight back and right onto the button here. So once more, Slovakia get an important shot right into the middle of the house to lie to, like they did the last time they came down this way, two ends ago. And they also got quite a nice roll because uh, now Tomas Paul can't see the entire redstone, which makes it harder uh, when he's now going to try and run it back. Well, he has to be pretty accurate with this one to come between those two and raise it onto the two yellow stones on the one foot circle. Big whoa. And uh, no, he's all the way out on. Oh, and he's actually gotten rid of that red, which means um, the third shot is now wide open. Slovakia can hit and roll in off of this, and uh, 
Have a bundle on the one foot. So hitting and rolling, the important thing is to actually roll far enough because if uh, you would ever just nose this, that would give Czech Republic an out. They could play the in off. So better do this before you leave it to your opponents. Ladislav Dershi, Slovakia, trailing two to the Czech Republic. And has he overswept this? Yes, he has. Well, we'd have much rather had the roll in because this does give a chance. <laughs> For the Czechs to make a double of this. So Susanna Haikova going to play the last stone of the Czech Republic here. One more after this for Slovakia. And Slovakia lying three right now. Need to be careful because we've seen a lot of stones in previous sheets curl a lot this way. Ah, and she won't get the roll in either. <laughs> well, just sweeping as much as they could there, which wasn't very much, I have to say, at that speed. <laughs> no, it's difficult to sweep, especially your own hits. Yeah, to run fast to catch up with them. The last stone here in this fourth end. Actually, I don't know why they're really indicating the hit and roll. If they hit this right on the nose, they'll get the three points that they need. Yeah, and uh, by, by the look of the ice, they could also be just playing a draw. Uh, yes, they could be. what they are doing actually need to be careful here if it overdraws a touch too much and just taps up the check stone obviously they're only going to get two I don't think they can really harm themselves with uh, playing the draw maybe just what they're more comfortable with they do have the entire eight foot so this is an important shot for Veronica Kavardova Having to sweep like mad to get it there. Is it going to be far enough? It's looking really, really good. It is. Extremely good shot from Veronika Gavardova. And Slovakia pick up three points there. Yeah, so they're now in the lead uh, when we head into the halftime break. Slovakia at five and the Czech Republic four. We will be back just before the second half of the game with some highlights. So stay tuned for that and for more mixed doubles.
So just a little recap of the early earlier shots of the game. And the last stone in the first end. And the Czech Republic will pick up two there. On to the second end, a chance for Slovakia to make two, and they will tap that stone up behind the cover. That was good enough for two uh, to tie the game at two each. And uh, Tomas Paul in the third end making that double takeout, which set up the two points that the Czechs got to come back to lead once more. Four shots to two. And in the fourth end, it will be this nice little tap that ended up allowing Slovakia to get three points with this last draw of Veronica's. So at this point, Slovakia leading the Czech Republic five shots to four. As we go into the second half of the game. Yeah, it's been a very tight and interesting game so far. Both teams with Hammer succeeding at getting multiple scores. And uh, on the other games, uh, Ireland now has a 4-3 lead over France. Uh, China has a 5-4 lead over New Zealand. And it's uh, Norway ahead of USA. They're leading 4-2. And uh, Switzerland is up 3-1 on the Netherlands. And, um, well, again, we've seen this in this game. Um, the teams tend to be a bit short with their draws rather than anything else. Slovakia failing to get theirs in the ring, so it's now just a open road down for uh, Czech Republic. Make it down quite far, so still some room for uh, Slovakia to freeze here. It's a nice shot by Susana Heikova. Well, Slovakia have... Got out of some of the difficulties with a couple of really important tap backs onto the button. That's what really has allowed them to get their 5 4 lead in this game. Yes, absolutely. Once more, just comes that way short with that, and they're also leaving the guards staggered. Could mean trouble because um, they can't do anything with them, really. They can't tap them or raise them because it's going to take more than one uh, shot to do so. They've already played two out of five, so they might need a bit of a mistake from uh, Thomas Paul if um, they're going to make something good out of uh, this end. Czech Republic um, have a chance to play a good draw here and sit three in behind the a whole bunch of guards. Makes a really good one though, sits top 12 foot, so uh, Slovakia are going to need to try and remove some here. Maybe just making sure that they don't lose more than uh, two. So uh, double attempt coming up from Ladislav. Or actually, just a hack weight tap, but he really needs to move this red one back or at least uh, make some, get some movement on uh, one of the back reds to create some sort of pocket and then uh, 
they can uh, freeze on to it later. So this is Ladislav Derci for uh, Slovakia. He needs to hit quite a lot of the red. I would have needed to curl a bit more because it uh, doesn't really change the situation. Gets rid of one of the reds, but as long as they get rid of one, Czech Republic will uh, still have the opportunity of sitting three. Made a really great draw with his previous one, Tomas Pell. Just hoping to do the same thing. Would like to get just a bit more curl, at least half bury this to avoid another double attempt by uh, Slovakia. Oh, and he's chipped off which means Slovakia might actually be able to see some of this and then, the, well, because they're on that angle, they don't need to hit a lot of the red because they're just going to get both of them moving anyway. Well, a good chance here to remove two of these stones anyway with this one shot. Ladislav Dershi. Just waiting for this to curl a bit. Looks a little bit wide. It makes contact with both, but only removes the one. The good thing, though, is that he has pushed this back. Earlier, they were looking on at a lot of red just lined up in front of the T line. Now, could maybe be an opportunity for them to get a good zone in there. It's the third time that Tomas Paul gets to play an out and draw here. It's really good as a player when you get to play the same shot just over and over again. Gives you a great feeling of uh, the ice. This one looks like it's going to be good as well. Just need to outcount the top yellow and he will. Which is a great shot because it's, it's not easy to for Slovakia to save themselves with a draw. They might just need to try and hit and roll off the back one and uh, hope to give up not more than two at least. But it looks like they are playing a draw, maybe freezing the back one. Or try and freeze the shot stone on an angle. It's. Um, Either way, it's uh, looking pretty tricky for Veronica. Yeah, Slovakia in quite a lot of trouble here. That stone of Thomas Powell's perfectly placed, stopping the draw right into the middle by Veronica. Kvardova, so she will Instead, just try to play the draw to outcount some of the check stones, make it difficult to remove it by coming round behind. 
The outer one of these three. Oh, need to find the gap. She's got a good looking line here. Well, that's a great shot in the circumstances. It's very well played. Yeah, really, it's not going to be easy for Czech Republic to remove it. They could try and draw and sit on top of it, maybe tap it back. Well, yeah, they can still see some of it. So I guess they could pick it out with hack weight. Certainly need to play, or probably best to play, not too much weight at this, so that they can allow the stone to get some curl as it makes its way down the ice. And if they could keep their shooter as well, that would mean they score four. Currently trailing by one. Five shots to four. Slovakia in the lead here in the fifth end. Eight ends of play in mixed doubles, so three more ends after this. Last one of the fifth end. Czech Republic are sitting one. This is a chance to score as many as four. Just playing controlled yep. weight, but I think they're trying to need to curl a bit, and it has not. Ooh. She's. Uh -huh. well. uh, is it enough to score? No. Well, she's managed to score one, but. Oh, that would, could have been scary. They could have given up a steal of one. Well, all that uh, came on the back of the really good shot from Veronika Kvardova for the Slovak Yeah, really team. managed to put the pressure on when they needed it. She was in all kinds of trouble there. Looked very likely to give up three or perhaps even four, but instead... Only the single point for the Czechs to tie the game at 5-all, going into the sixth end. And here you see the coach bench, Dan Raphael, a very known uh, coach in the curling world, and uh, it's uh, Jana Kvardova who's the coach for the Slovakian team. They do have two coaches, but only one of them managed to come out, so it's good to see her here. So first stone here in the sixth end, being played once more by Susanna Haikova. And the team with the last stone has scored a point or more at every end. No stolen points in this game. Well, they come a bit closer every time, I guess. This one is all the way down to the eight foot. And it's not in a bad position. can still be very usable for the Czechs and also making it a bit tighter for Slovakia. They would probably like to just corner freeze on the red one. So Veronika Kvardova, who played 32% in the first game, has certainly upped her level of curling in this game. She's playing extremely well. She's got draw weight beautifully arranged, especially with her last stones. Yep, so she comes all the way down to the shot stone. And of course, it's nice because they're, they're sitting too. But with this being so early and then, the Czech Republic can start tapping this back. They will very soon be in full control of, of the forefoot.
So Tomasz Paul once more playing the second, third and fourth stones of the end. This is first in the sixth end. And uh, probably going into this, you would certainly have picked Czech Republic to be the winning team here. They've got good record in mixed doubles over the last few years. And they look uh, a little bit in more control of their shots, just with the deliveries, look tighter and more... A um, little bit more refined, maybe, than the Slovak deliveries, but struggling to make them their presence felt in this game. That's a really, really nice shot by Tomas Paolo. Comes all the way down to the face of the yellow one. Still, Slovakia sitting two, though, so they're going to put up the guard. They do have last stone in the sixth end, which, of course, is a bit of an advantage. Vladislav so. Dershi, his first stone here in the sixth end. And it looks like they're happy just to try and guard this. Early in the mixed doubles end to be guarding, but that's a nice shot too from him. Making it tougher to raise the red and remove these yellows. Well, the Czech Republic have got into a bit of a mess here. I think Tomas actually had to come a bit harder at that sh shot with his last stone and they would have shift these it up. yellow ones, at least one of them, out of play. Now he's got them both locked in the back there and he can't get at them easily at all. No, we're going to get to hear what Dan Raphael has to say about the situation as the Czech team has called a timeout. Oh, Dan Raphael making his way all the way down from the other end. So if you're looking to gain a little bit of time here, then we see like two, three options. You'll get it. One is to run back. Second, what was the second one? Opening it. <laughs> Opening it, yeah. I'll and the back. and I mean, red one. What could go wrong? Sorry. What could go wrong if you play the run back? Like, if you hit that on the nose, the yellow one, mm -hmm. straight back, Yeah. only one yellow will stay. It's either that or you peel it open and all of a sudden you're guarding it. So you would like to play a run back through, run the, through yeah. the yellow one? Mm -hmm. Okay. So Because if you play the red one and you pick out your own sideways, they're just guarding it and they're guarding with two yellows. Yeah. Okay. Okay, so if you run it back now, at least if you nose it, the back yellow will go. This one will probably go and you'll have two red in the front. Yeah. Okay. And so it was like the wrong wrong miss? Well, you got to miss it on the inside. You can't miss it on the out. Okay. Because then you'll just jam it and stay. <laughs> right, so those were the words from Dan Raphael. Okay. While we were thinking it was maybe a bit early to guard. The guard is definitely uh, putting Czech Republic in some I trouble. They're now going to try and run it back to... Well, if they, they could run it back straight and hit the red one, one of the yellow back button would go and maybe the stone, the guard that they're running down would go out to side as well. Just leaving a red-yellow combination in the rings. A little bit of a tactical error there from Thomas with his last stone. Here going for the run back, we heard what Dan Raphael had to say and... Awesome! Well, we heard they were not allowed to miss it wide. He's 
made the run back, he's made it beautifully. And uh, left just a one yellow on the button. Well, he couldn't really have got that one any better in the no. circumstances. Nice raise. But still, Slovakia have a one in there. This game's actually been played to quite a high level. Yeah, we've been treated so, to some uh, lovely shots in each end. So Dershi once more at the wrong end. Dictating the play. There's quite a bit of that with some of the teams. And so we have quite a long time to wait before they come to actually play the shot. Yeah, well, as long as they're not struggling with time, if uh, the players are more comfortable with knowing what the situation looks like, then... Uh, and it might also... I heard some teams saying that they find it really difficult to hear each other across the ice, so... Just making sure that he has what he needs to execute. And as long as they don't run out of time, then, of course, that's fine. This one... Um, well, not, not what they were looking for. No, though. that's a bad one from Dershi. It does bump the guards across slightly. So they guard more effectively than before. But not by much. So a chance here for... Tomasz Powell. To draw right into the one foot circle, I think that's the best option actually. Try and draw right round or leave it just short so that you can tap it across with the last stone. Which will be played by Susanna Haikova for the checks. Okay, like Sam. I think if I was the Czech Republic here, I'd be quite happy to give Slovakia one point. Just block the line to the four-foot circle and make it really hard for Slovakia to score more than a single point here. Yeah, Czech Republic can't really do much about that yellow stone that is on the button. And giving up one is um, certainly very acceptable. One down with Hammer in the seventh. They could uh, make good use out of that. Mali. Calling up the sweeping to try and make it stop in a wider line. When Slovakia are just guarding the same situation. Mm. They don't want to come down with a draw and have have Czech Republic maybe play a double on them. But it's getting really difficult to see how they're gonna score more than one. Okay. Well, they need to come around the red stones there and be at least half hidden so that it makes it impossible to really take the two yellow stones out with one one, sh one shot. I think they are just guarding everything, though. Playing it a bit safe to make sure that they stay in the lead. Well, it's funny. Both teams are uh, going for the same result here. Yeah, they really are. The Slovaks are quite happy just to have one, really, given the circumstances. And the Czechs are quite happy to give them one. 
Yeah, there is a slash double here. Well, that just bounced off the top guard there and it has left the double on, which was the one thing that Slovakia were trying not to do. So, I mean, it's not an easy shot, but it's definitely there. And it's no big risk either. If you're going to miss this and hit your reds, that miss is so thin. Slash double attempt for Susanna Haikova. Oh. She makes this, they're going to oh. sit three. Oh, but there's a big wall. <laughs> and now all of a sudden she needs to chase the stone to try and get the double. Uh, and she's got it. That's a great shot by Susanna Haikova. <laughs> Well, she almost gave up on that. Just catches enough of it. Big, big mistake from Slovakia to leave that shot on. Yeah, definitely. Now they're looking at a tricky draw. So last stone of the end now to come. And this one needing to be played once more by Veronika Kavardova. And she has to make a perfect draw weight with this shot. Mustn't get caught in these front stones of the Czechs either at the moment. Czech Republic line three. Czech Republic has really pulled out some great shots in this game. They have, but they haven't been able to shake Slovakia till now. Can Veronika Kvardova make there this draw shot? Has she got the perfect weight? She's made a couple of nice ones, but this one is way out wider than she's been in previous ends. Remember, she needs uh, full four foot. Well, she's going to count at least one of them. Is she going to count them all? Not all of them. Not a bad effort in the circumstances. She draws the four foot green circle there, cutting the checks down to one point. But uh, they did have a great chance to take a point themselves and go one up. Instead, they are one behind now. 6-5 for the Czech Republic over Slovakia going into the seventh end. Yes, and uh, France have a 6-5 lead, lead over Ireland. New Zealand is up 9-6 against... Oh, sorry. China is up 9-6 against New Zealand. Uh, Norway has an 8-2 lead over USA. And uh, Netherlands uh, took a big, big five in uh, the fifth end to lead the game against Switzerland, 6-3. to three. And it's once again Susanna Haikova in the hack. She played a difficult double with her previous stone and now she's there to play a finesse draw 56 percent for the game which remember she has had a couple of really good shots it's mostly been the uh, draws that have been a bit short to begin with and, uh, this is quite a common mistake if you want to call it that that when when you've just thrown a peel weight hit the next draw to come might be a bit heavy Just bouncing off that placed stone on the one foot circle in the middle. As she passed the guard with this, it's really breaking and she's not. Doesn't move the guard too much, and will I believe she's spilled into the rings with her shooter. So uh, in that case, it's an okay result for Veronika Kvardova, who is 50% so far in the game. Well, it may only be 50%, but one or two of her shots have been absolutely key to keeping this 
Slovak, Slovak team in this game. Awesome. Tomáš Paul. Awesome. Well, that one drew a little bit further than he hoped, but it's uh, not a bad spot to be in, I don't think. No, there is a lot of room for uh, Slovakia to put a stone in here, though. Slav Dershi, 63%. Oh, and that's quite an unfortunate mistake. Just just played that way too heavy because I believe he was only drawing right and instead he's punched his own out. Yeah, that was a, ba a bad one. So. Both the Slovak players just a little bit behind on the statistics when it comes to their opponent. They're out shooting them by 7 or 8 percent each. And that's probably just the difference in this game, really. It's been quite tight all the way through. Swapping twos, now we're down to single points. That quite often happens when the game develops a bit further, that gets a bit tighter. So Tomáš Powell, 68 percent for him in this game. Awesome. Well, nice shot from Thomas Poole Fine once more. On. Just tapping that back so that it's it leaves uh, Czech Republic line three, but it's in the back there. The Slovaks doing as a catcher. So they tap it back and it can get caught by the Slovak counter, yellow counter in the back rings. So quite good just to tap it into the back rings rather than right out of the house. It's not a useful stone for Slovakia at all, but it could still help the Czechs when it comes to a takeout. Something could rattle onto it and remain in the house. So Slovakia now looking to remove these two okay. check stones on the right as we were looking at it there. Going for the double takeout on these stones on the right hand side. So Ladislav Dershi once more. Rather than double takeout, maybe the roll is an important issue for this shot. Yeah, they do have last. Yep. Yeah, they do have last stone, so getting rid of the opponent ones isn't as important as leaving your own in a good position. And I think um, he's just given Thomas Paul a way to remove the yellow and also roll in front of the reds a bit to make sure that there's no good pocket to freeze on. And if he does roll in front of these reds a little bit, if he straddles that centre line, he will be guarding the other two in the back a little bit. So. Well, 
He might be making a mistake here. To me, it looks as if he's trying to just draw between these two and lie three. But the yellow stone on the right on that green four-foot circle is still dangerous for the Czech Republic. I think it really would be better removed. Uh, well, I really don't know what he was playing out there, do you? That was a I funny think he shot was trying to play. to play pretty much the same thing, but hit it on the inside. Push it back and roll in. But now there's a chance for uh, Dershi to uh, come down and corner freeze on the red one, maybe tap it back to make sure that they're sitting two. And uh, leave a difficult shot for Susanna Haikova with her last. This has some curling to do. It's, it's quite big on weight, that one. He just needed to freeze it, basically, and he's tapped it all the way back 12 foot. So probably just a bit eager on weight. And he's not going to complicate it a lot for Heikova. So two stones remaining here. One for Susanna Haikova and the other one for Slovakia. Last stone in this end belonging to Slovakia. Czech Republic, really, they would like to either steal a point here or make sure if they are going to give up a point that it's only one and not more than that, if possible. I must say, I think the shot here is to hit that one on the nose and try to roll to the left, but I would play a little bit more weight at this and just make sure you get it out of play here on this occasion. Yeah, just remove the yellow and there's... Exactly. They're forcing uh, Slovakia to one and then they'll have a tight game with Hammer coming home. And, uh, That's right. But again, they look like playing fairly gentle weight at this. Be tempted to play a little more weight at this particular shot. The number one priority is to remove that yellow stone from biting the white one foot circle in the middle there. Well, that was okay. Yeah. It certainly forces Slovakia to try just to make the single point. And it would tie the game up, but it would give the Czechs the crucial last stone advantage in the last end of play. Six ends played. This is the end of the seventh. So this is an important uh, stone here for Veronica
vital shot for her. Last stone in the seventh end. Yeah, she needs it on the pin to score Spit a point. Spit up. Spit up. Keep. Up. 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 Oh, and what? She's got it right on the pin. Great shot. To tie the game up before the final end. Well, that stone nearly <laughs> glided <laughs> through the gap there and would have given up two, <laughs> two shots to the Czechs if that had happened. But as it turned out, she made the stone, took the point and tied the game at 6-6. Six -six with one end remaining here. So, one more end to go. Both teams at six points. And in a regular curling game, it's a big advantage to the team uh, with last stone coming home. Uh, if this is the situation, mix up is a bit different. There is already the guard, the one behind the T line. If you make the perfect freeze, um, then uh, of course there are no hits allowed until the fourth stone in each end. So. It's definitely better for the team that's trying to freeze, even though I think a lot of the time it's still beneficial to the team with last stone. And um, Veronica Quardova, she's just overthrown this by far. She had a little wobble out of the hack. I wonder if it just uh, made her lose focus. Of course, we have a, a whole bunch of game fin games finishing up. France has an 8-6 lead over Ireland. China is up 9-7 against New Zealand. Norway has a four-point lead over USA coming home in the last end. And the uh, Netherlands also have a four-point lead over Switzerland. Coming down 12 foot here, still an opportunity for Slovakia to get a good freeze on the shot stone. I wouldn't well. mind in this situation to see Czech Republic actually taking the guard to the side. They do have hammer, everything is wide open. If you do that and um, then they can start hitting. Well, before that, we have the stone of Ladislav Dershi. An important one here to draw round behind that guard and freeze right on the stone belonging to Czech Republic. And it will not happen. He was caught on the front guard. Yeah, and Susanna Haikova electing to hit the yellow one in the rings. Again, I'd quite like to see them peel off the center guard because if you want to steal, I think a center guard is your most important weapon. Yes, this could be a tactical error. That is it. Leaving the center guard there and the chance to come around it, which is certainly what Slovakia will try to do and freeze right on the check stone and the button. Oh, this has really caught some curl. He will remove his own. <laughs> That's a shocking shot. I don't know where he got that one from. Have he played so well all game? <laughs> no. That's just Me awful. <laughs> I don't really think he knows where he got that from either. No. And, well, centre guard still in play. So... Slovakia can keep drawing around this. Oh, that was certainly the worst shot of the game. We can put him at number one point for that. <laughs> uh, I'm not sure he'll be too happy about that award. No, he's played very, very well, but, <laughs> but not with that one. So, now a chance to come behind. In fact, curiously enough, 
even though it was a terrible shot, he might. Uh, it might not be the the worst thing to move that stone from the button. No, he got rid of that backing because if with the centre guard and the perfect freeze, it, it's so it's a lot easier to steal a game. It's a bit like bluff and double bluff, isn't it? So <laughs> perhaps <laughs> maybe that was the double bluff, although you could tell from the look on his face that wasn't what he was planning on. Oh dear. Oh, they should have swept that one. So uh, are we seeing a few nerves here in the final end? I think that's the third shot we've seen that's just, um, well, actually been completely useless. <laughs> but it's still the question to hit the guard or the one in the rings, and now they're going for the one in the guard. Playing from this side, though, could, um, could maybe mean they get the double on the yellows. Well, it's definitely the right shot to clear the front out and allow uh, the opportunity to get to the four-foot circle more easily if they need to do that. So Tomasz Paul Panic sweeping. He achieves the guard being removed. So, oh, we're going to have a timeout. So, what are the options, Sarah, here for? Slovakia to try to steal a point to win this game. 6-6 six, six, the score. Well, they could put the guard back up, wait for uh, Czech Republic to keep removing it and then just come down there with their last. I think they're always thinking about coming down there already, but it might, might still be too soon. And by the judge of body language, they might also be thinking about hitting the red to sit too, which I'm not really sure about. Here is uh, Jana Kvardová. Coach making her way down the ice. Hey. <laughs> Druhá možnost je z této strany Zakácka. Z této strany Zakácka za červený. Hej. Pojď sem. Well, you could, I suppose, try and draw right round behind that check stone too. I know it's on the top of the eight-foot circle, so there's not a lot of space, but if you get it half covered, it could be enough. To lie two at the moment. Slovakia do lie the first shot, but it's completely open for the Czech Republic to hit it. Hey, I think it's our team, so we can go there and go there. So we want to go there, like the two that are dressed up. Hey. Kokatko. It's enough to get out of the way. It won't be like that. It can be 10. 10. OK. So what's the decision? It looks like they're electing to hit the red one. I think um, they could try and make use of it instead by either putting a guard up in front or coming down behind it. Doing this to make sure they sit too. Touching it, I think it needs to draw a little bit to hit it on the nose. Yes, it does. Oh, and it needs to hang around, that's for sure. Ah. Now it's starting to look really tough for Slovakia if they are going to steal. Only one stone in play, and it's wide open.
Yeah, that was really the wrong tactic to play there. And if you are going to play it, you have to execute the shot and lie too. But even then, it's not putting Czech Republic under enough pressure, I don't think, to uh, set up a steel point for Slovakia. So now Tomáš Paul. Just going for the hit and stick on this one. Whoa, whoa, whoa. Well, this is where he missed the uh, over curl to take out, so maybe he's just overcompensated a tiny bit here, but he'll be fine and at least remove it. Well, there's no hiding place for this no. Slovak stone. It's just choose your point that you want to draw to. Then make sure you make it. And then it'll be up to the Czech Republic to either try to outcount the draw or to hit the stone and stick for their one. So as you can see from that hammer on the board, indicating that Czech Republic have the last stone here. We have two stones to go. This one from Veronika Kavardova, and then one last stone to go after that from Susanna Haikova. So just a draw into the house for Kavardova. Well, she did uh. enough to hang around. I think Czech Republic oh, should yeah. just draw here. Yes, for sure. Just a draw to full 12 foot circle. The purple circle there being the 12 foot circle. Full draw to the 12 foot, and the Czech Republic will win this game. So, this is why you practice lots of draw weight shots so that when you come to play this one, which is under a little bit more pressure to win the game, then you have that weight absolutely in your head and able to be transferred to playing the perfect stone. So here she goes, draw for the game. And fine. Susanna Haikova. And it looks pretty good. Just has to reach the house fully into the 12 foot. A little bit of panic here, but I think they're okay. Yeah, they look fine. And it will reach the house fully into the eight foot circle. One point for the Czech Republic, and with it, the 7 6 win over Slovakia. A good day's work for the Czechs. But I think when they look at the game, and probably coming into the game, they might have expected a easier run than that. Slovakia putting up a great fight. Yeah, really, really interesting game from both teams. So Sarah will bring you an interview in a few minutes, a few moments, and. Uh, I will just uh, give you a summary of the key points of the game, which will follow momentarily. There we can see the scoreboard. Swaps of twos and a three in the early ends, and then 
narrowing down to single points in the later ends, fifth and sixth, the sixth end, the key one with that steal. Mistake by Ladislav with his last stone there, just touching off the front yard and running out to allow the double takeout from Haikova. Great shot she played there. That turned the game really in favour of the Czech Republic. And you can see from that shot, only one game remaining on the ice. The game between Ireland and France, where the score is 8-8 currently. Final scores on the other sheets. Netherlands, 8-5 winners over Switzerland. Switzerland, previous winners of this event on several occasions. A big five-ender for the Netherlands in the fifth end, transforming that score. And then... 7-6, our game score. 8-4, Norway over the United States and China running New Zealand out of stones in the 8th end to win 9 shots to 7. So we can look at our recap. Some of the key shots in our own game here. And we start at the second end. That lovely chip in, allowing Slovakia to tie the game at 2-2. And here, Tomáš Paul. These two Slovakian stones, Slovak stones, giving the Czech Republic two more for four. And this lovely chip shot, setting up a three-point end for Slovakia with this last stone draw of Veronika Kavardova. Great control of weight from her. So Slovakia now in the lead, five shots to four. And in deep trouble in the next end it will again be Veronika Kavardova who saves the bacon of the Slovak pair ended up giving away one point the Czech Republic was key to the winning of the game that double takeout giving them the point there. Up. And a very good saving shot against three once more from Veronika Kvardova. <laughs> and finally, enough for the single point and a 7-6 victory for the Czech Republic against Slovakia. I will now hear from the Czech pair how they managed to get that win. So that was a, an exciting game. What was uh, the key to your win? Um, I actually, I don't know. We played better and better each end in a row. So that's maybe it. <laughs> but I think the most important thing was what our coach said in the middle. I mean, what did he say? <laughs> throw just one kind of draw, <laughs> nothing else. <laughs> just one kind of draw. What did they mean by that? Well, you, we played the first stone from one side and played the second time, third time, just make the same shot and let them play something else. <laughs> well, it worked out well. Um, you got the bronze medal last year. How did you prepare coming up to this event? Uh, this year we visited a one tournament in Budapest. It was pretty cool because we met a lot of good teams. So that was kind of part of our par um, preparation. And then we had just normal practices in Prague with a lot of friendly matches. So what are your goals for this week? Well, hope to repeat the, the results from the last year. 
So get to the semifinals and then see if we can win and hope. <laughs> another medal. Well, great. Good luck to both yeah. of you. Thank you. Thanks. So a happy Czech duo there at the end of this afternoon play. I'm Richard Harding and I was joined today by Sarah Carlson. We're very delighted to have brought you this game between Czech Republic and Slovakia. Join us again later for the game between Brazil and Scotland. Until then, a very good afternoon from Dumfries Ice Bowl in the south of Scotland. Goodbye.